Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to kick off a video series that is going to be probably about seven videos uh, talking about and reviewing Build Your Library Level Zero Around the World Study. It is the main curriculum we are using this year for our homeschool with my second grader and my kindergartner. And the reason it's going to be seven videos is because I'm going to break up the videos by continent um, because that's kind of how the curriculum flows and it honestly makes the most sense in my brain to do it that way. So uh, it's going to be a seven part series and we are going to highlight a spine book from the curriculum in each of the videos. I'm also going to do a um, spotlight on an alternative spine that I brought in from either other curriculum or just that I found that I like in each of the videos to give you guys more literature options if you're looking for something different if you're using Build Your Library. And then we're going to talk about what we did all the activities and crafts and all that goodness in each of the videos um, and tell you guys what we thought about it books we liked books we didn't like and just give you our honest opinion so today's video is gonna be about week one through I think it's five uh, the first week technically isn't about a continent she does an introduction to geography which I think is actually brilliant for kiddos who have never studied geography what is it you know understanding your place you know in space essentially on which continent you live state etc and then week two through four is all about or excuse me two through five is all about north america so that's what we're going to be touching upon today so I think the best place to start is to talk about our spine that I am going to highlight in this video. And I think it's probably the most important spine amongst them all because this is a geography. <laughs> it is a geography curriculum. It is the atlas that Build Your Library recommends that you use. And it is the Smithsonian Children's Illustrated Atlas. Now, this is not the first time we have used this book in our homeschool curriculum. Last year, we used this because we did a brief touch upon geography. We used Torchlight Level Zero, and they recommend this as the atlas spine to use as well. And we only did the geography portion from her curriculum because hers is an all in one curriculum as well, just like Build Your Library. And we just needed the, uh, the geography from her curriculum. And so we used that portion of it. And I honestly only did about half of what she recommended because my youngest was a pre k -er and my oldest was a first grader. So, and it was our first year of homeschooling. We weren't trying to go crazy or anything there. So, um, it, cause you're probably wondering, well, why are you doing a full all encompassing geography study this year? If you did it last year, we didn't. It was a very, very light high level touch on geography last year. This year we're digging in and diving in hard with art, with cooking class, with an animal study on each continent, and of course learning all about the culture and the geographical space where this place is on the planet Earth, etc. And we're learning about climates and habitats and all that good stuff. So this is a really fun year. I can already tell from the first uh, five weeks how much we're gonna love this year. So again, Getting off on a tangent, let's head back to the main spine. I love this atlas and I was so excited that Build Your Library also recommended that we utilize this and scheduled it throughout the curriculum. Okay, so one, why do I love this spine so much? I love the way that it is organized. It's organized by continent and it flows really well actually with this curriculum the way it is organized um it goes by from north america south america africa europe asia and then australia asia slash polar regions and then it breaks it down even further into the smaller countries now just to show you the first page it's a, um it says how to read the maps right so it's showing you what the maps look like in this book how to read them, what the keys mean. It's telling you like what the different um, habitats, how they'll be colored and identified. So this just tells you how to use the book, frankly. <laughs> like that's the best way to explain it. And I think that's super helpful when you're looking at a new atlas because every atlas is a little different. Then it goes into the world talking about the different continents and the oceans. Sorry about that glare. 
And then um, after that, you go into your first continent. So I'm just going to show you one page so we don't spend the whole video talking about this book. But so the first page is North America and there's all these little tidbits and factoids all over these pages, which are great. They can be conversation starters with your kiddos. Like here, for example, number three, in which Canadian city is the CN Tower found? And so this is stuff that you can then go find out in these pages. So every continent section starts off with an overview of the entire continent which is what we did north america and so we read through this the girls got to ask questions about the pictures if there was something that was of interest to them we went and dug further in on that topic um so great conversation starters to learn more and then i love how they lay out it might seem a little busy but it's really not when you look at it they just provide one two three four four, five, five to six little blips about stuff that's on there. If you wanna dig in further, they have little factoids in this tiny writing, but you don't have to, of course. It highlights all the major cities, um, the capitals, of course. We've got um, Ottawa over here. It also tells you how they say hello in each of the countries. So they do two for here because you have French Canada and English speaking Canada, of course. So hello for the English speakers. And then for French Canada, bonjour. So I just like the way they have this all laid out and they've got a key up here and they do a quick overview of the country. So they combined Canada and Alaska on this one just because of course it's one land mass. It just makes the most sense to cover them that way. So my girls really love this Atlas. They did not get annoyed or bored that I pulled it back out this year. They're like, yes, we love that book. It's just, it's just enough information to wet their whistle to get excited about it, but not overwhelming. But if they want to dig further, they can through this atlas. So big thumbs up for this atlas. The book that I'm going to be talking about in this video that we added, I actually kind of accidentally stumbled upon via our library. And actually one of my daughters asked him, it was over the summer, they're like, hey, can we, can we check this out? Can this be the book that I read this week? I was like, sure. And it's called what's on your plate and it looked familiar to me and I couldn't figure out why <laughs> and it's because in from Torchlight last year we read a book in this same series called what do you celebrate for geography so this is like its sister book so I got this from the library and I love that it um, highlights food instead of holidays across the world okay so we open it up Okay, so in the inside, they have the little map showing all the continents, and it doesn't hit every country, of course, in the world. This book would be so thick and so very long if it was, but they hit the major countries that people kind of want to know about. So United States, what are we known for? Hamburgers, fried chicken, and mashed potatoes. <laughs> Cracks me up. But it talks about the country, it gives you a little history about their food development, things like that. Um, and then it, all of them, it gives a recipe that you can do yourself as well, which I thought was kind of neat. Um, so for example, for Mexico, it, it gives you a recipe for guacamole and they've got tacos, tamales, empanadas. And then of course it gives you a little expanded history on Mexico, etc. But the girls really like this because my kids love food, so why not talk about it more? So this was a big hit introducing this in the first couple weeks. It's from the library. If I have a hard time ever getting it checked out because we're not there every, not every country is covered here. So we won't use it every week. So I figured we just get it from the library whenever we need it. But if there's a week that I can't, honestly, I'll probably just buy it off of Amazon and have it, you know, two days shipped to me because it's not um, super expensive. And the girls really like this book. And we have the other one in the series, What Do You Celebrate? So why not add to the series that we have in our home library? Now, just talking about the overall last couple of weeks. So week one was an intro to geography, like I mentioned, and they had us read a book called Me on the Map. So the entire first week really centered around learning about maps, understanding what geography is, um, and kind of putting it in a context that they would understand because this curriculum is written for kindergartners. So it's meant to be more gentle, but to be honest, I actually thought some of the book choices and everything, my second grader loved them. And I will be honest, it went a little over my kindergartner's head at times. Now, let me preface this with my kindergartner 
just turned five a week ago. Um, so she is a younger kindergartner. So if you have an older kindergartner, this program would probably be just fine. So with all that being said, I think this is a good program for a kindergartner, but I'm trying to decide if I didn't have my oldest, would I have probably paused this and done it next year if I only had my kindergartner? Mayhaps, just because she's a little bit younger and some of this material it, it's really good but it is a little bit over her head like she's having a little bit of a harder time sitting for chapter books and um we did read a chapter book during these first couple of weeks that pertain to um north america which i thought was a really cute book but she had a hard time sitting still for it i let her play with magnetiles and things or color while i'm reading um and she does listen a little bit but if i tried to make her still she wouldn't listen at all so i'm better off having her move and do something that helps her kind of remain still and be able to keep her ears open um my second grader loved this though so i only say that and want to notate that because i think if you have a younger kindergartner i would maybe wait one more year and do this level with them because um and it, again i think it's a great curriculum i just think maybe some of the choices were a little bit over her head for her um so i just want to be completely honest about that but still loving the curriculum and we're still doing it because my second grader is loving it and my kindergartner is still getting things out of it but she is not sitting well for everything per se um now that first week getting back to that so we read me on the map we also read another book that i got from my library so i'll put a picture of it up here it was called how to make an apple pie and see the world which by the way both my girls love that book it was a really good book um, this girl had to travel around to different countries to get all the ingredients to make an apple pie and it kind of was a nice uh, I would say like more living style book picture book uh, to introduce the concept of geography of there being places around the world because if you have to think about it like a kindergartner doesn't understand she just thinks like her town and her little area is all there is in the world but the reality is the world's a much bigger place than that so it kind of introduces that concept that there's many more people out there many more lands and cultures and places out there just kind of breaking that ice with that book um, and then the me on the map book was great because it does it says hey this is me i'm not gonna go through the whole book but it then it introduces this as my bedroom this is my house and it basically keeps pulling the lens out more and more until you're like this is planet earth that i live on and then it brings it back in okay so that brings me to our first craft that we did our activity that we did in the curriculum and it was the me on the map flip book i have um some personal information covered here with a post-it because what it is it's a flip book so this is my daughter she drew herself my name is emery so it starts with her and then it, you'll it's her house which has our address on it so i didn't put that in there and then the next one is our city and then our state of north carolina oh my goodness the United States of America, so our country, and then it goes to the continent, North America. Oh my God. And then the last one is planet Earth. So it gives them the small, like microscopic to macro view of everything. And it, I think it just helps them process like going bigger and bigger and bigger and understanding the map, geography, etc. On top of that, one of the other activities is, is they mapped their bedrooms from a bird's eye view. My youngest, my kindergartner, I thought she was gonna have a really hard time with this. She actually did really well. I left it upstairs, I forgot to bring it downstairs. But um, she mapped out her room pretty accurately. I was fairly impressed. So I thought that was gonna be challenging for her, but she did a really good job with that. So this was a great first week, getting introduced to geography, reading maps, compass roses, um, north, south, east, west, what a key was. And we already had previous experience working um, and understanding maps through our Blossom and Root level one uh, geography component, literature component that we did. It was an extension of the language arts for them and I actually included my pre-k -er in it and she really liked that so we already kind of understood what a compass rose was what directions are north south east west things like that from there but this really drove it home so that they could then build that foundational knowledge of what maps are to then learn the rest of geography that we we're going to be doing this year
So after that, we moved into learning about Canada as well as Alaska. So per the atlas I showed you, it just makes sense to talk about them as one, you know, uh, landmass. But obviously explaining Alaska is a state of the U.S. It's not part of Canada as a country, um, but similar temperate or similar um polar climates, things like that. It just makes sense to kind of talk about them together. Um, and so we learned all about Canada. We made our first cooking dish. We made fried bannocks. I thought they were so stinking tasty. My girls did not enjoy them. <laughs> it's fine, whatever. I think they just had too much of a baking soda taste. And that came from our spine book that I'll talk about in a future video, uh, Global Feast Cooking Class. Um, and I thought it was pretty tasty and it's actually kind of dangerous how easy they are to make and how like it's just fried bread. It's delicious. <laughs> um, so they didn't like it. My husband and I liked them, but you know, they're trying everything. I told them you have to try everything once and that's all that matters. You don't have to like it. Just try it. So I think this year we're going to be opening up their palates to different um, tastes and I think that's going to be a really good thing. And then alongside with Canada, we started reading our first chapter book, which was The Very Far North. Uh, again, went over my youngest head. I think I thought it was really funny. There's really funny banter in it and the way that uh, she writes, I think is very um, intelligent and just quirky and cool. And I think my, my oldest liked the book, she did, but I think some of that funness was lost on her just because it again might have gone over her head a teensy bit needs to have a little bit more knowledge of the world to understand some of the jokes that were in there um I don't know if that makes sense everybody raves about it I give it like a b plus for my kids ages and my interest in it there is a sequel so if you do read it and you do enjoy it you can absolutely go do that we are not going to because it did kind of feel like a little bit of a slog getting through it halfway through the book because my youngest wasn't paying attention my oldest didn't really quite understand what was going on but she was listening and liked it but she was like i don't understand this and was asking me a lot of questions which you know makes it t take longer to read it but um and i'm happy she asks questions i'm happy to answer them um but again it was a little bit of a slog at a certain point and then it kind of sped up towards the end and we started liking it it was the you know culmination of everything in the book but um it talks about the great white north canada <laughs> so um i think it's a really good book to kind of narratively introduce that landscape how cold it is the animals because it's anthropomorphic the the characters are animals and they talk which again i think that was kind of about the other thing i think my kid always had a hard time with that they're like but, but animals can't talk and i'm like i know but it's just a story guys and so for them they're being very literal about it so anthropomorphism is something we're trying to wrap their brains around right now um but they they enjoyed it in general and I think it was a good introduction to Canada Alaska that landscape next we went down to the United States of America which obviously they know very well because we live here um and we got to make s'mores <laughs> as our food, which obviously they absolutely love because they've already had s'mores before since we live in America. Um, tasty little treat that they were looking forward to. I, I leave the cooking till the last day on Friday as our fun activity to do. And it also kind of is like, hey, we got to get through the rest of this in order to get to our food. So it kind of keeps them on track a little bit. Um, it's a little bit of a reward system for them. Um, and we read Oh, I forgot one more book that we've, we read, uh, Carson Crosses America. It's a picture book. It is so cute. Again, from the library, I'll put it here for you. Um, and it's about Carson, who is a dog, and he is traveling along with his owner from basically Vancouver on the West Coast. I think he starts, it's not Vancouver, it's somewhere near there. And then he lands all the way on the, or so, sorry, over here on your version, he starts on the west coast near vancouver and they take a road trip all the way to the east coast they meet up with a friend and it just there's this really cute um reunion at the I end of it Could you try again? siri um there's this really cute reunion at the end of the book between the characters and just mm, so cute um girls love that book definitely give it two thumbs up highly recommend um, and then, sorry, going back to the United States. So that we were supposed to read a boy called Slow. Um, it's about Sitting Bull and it's um, meant for children. 
I could not get it from my library. And by the time I realized I wasn't going to be able to, it was out of schedule. Like we, we would be behind schedule. So unfortunately we skipped it. Um, but we were also reading, uh, the American Girl Kaya series at that time. So we were learning about Native Americans a lot at that point. So um, obviously the Nest Purse, different tribe, but still um, we're introducing the, um, that. So I felt like we were at least covering the topics of Native Americans in America at the same time. And so that didn't seem to be a problem that we were missing out on that book. And then the craft we got to do for learning about the United States from our art book. So was Statue of Liberty torches. How fun are these? <laughs> so we actually are not using the recommended art spine um, in the current version. We're actually using the old version, um, the previous version that she had done for this curriculum. And it is here, I'll show it to you. Around the world art and activities. The reason she swapped this out for the current book that is recommended for the spine is because this went out of print. However, I had no problems getting it from thrift books and I think it was like sub five dollars. So we like this better because this is more arts like paper crafts. The one that she swapped in for the current art recommended recommended spine is a little bit more um it's harder things to get a hold of. Like there's telephone wire at one point needed for one of the crafts, like things like that. Just things that we don't have necessarily maybe lying around the house. And also my girls are way more into paper crafts just because of their age. So this is way up their alley. They loved doing the Statue of Liberty torches. They love learning about the Statue of Liberty. I showed them pictures of when I went to New York City and I was up in the crown and I showed them up into the torch. And so we got to delve into that a little bit more. So that was super duper fun and super easy to make. Um, and then after our trip through the United States, we headed on down to Mexico and we got to read again, library book, uh, called Dear Primo, A Letter to My Cousin. And it's about these two boys, cousins. One lives in America, one lives in Mexico, and they're writing letters to each other. Dear Primo, Primo is cousin. And they're talking about their lives and how they compare and contrast. And I just, it, the, the, the illustrations were adorable. And I just think that it was a really good book for them to kind of see, okay, how we live here in America versus how kiddos live in Mexico. And it just kind of put it in perspective for my girls. And they really enjoyed that book. Um, the arts and crafts that we got to do where we made uh, papel picados. They are um, <laughs> little colorful cutouts. So you literally fold up tissue paper and then you cut little things into it. And then you get these kind of fun um, flags. Generally, you kind of hang them all along and it creates like a banner is the best way to explain it. I did one, this is mine. Um, and so my girls are very into um, Dia de los Muertos. Um, we've learned about it through a bunch of different avenues and it just keeps popping up and it's very interesting to them, the concept of honoring the dead and remembering them and just making food and celebrating their lives. They really like that. So I told them this year, we can actually celebrate Dia de los Muertos. Um, it's November 1st and 2nd, so right after Halloween. And uh, so now that we know how to make these, they're like, can we make more and make a whole banner that we can put on the ofrenda? Like it's the table, the offering table. And I was like, absolutely. So. I just love that they're getting into like these different things and these cultural things that we in America do not do. I think it's really nice to be able to embrace different, um, different holidays and things like that, but it's not in a way that's, I think, disrespectful. It's in a way that they really enjoy it and they like the concept of honoring the dead, which is what Dia de los Muertos is. So I think that's going to be great. I'll share more about that, um, later on in one of my videos about, uh, that celebration and how it went. Um, and then after Mexico, we move on to Central America and we, um, oh, and the Caribbean islands, we touch upon them. I'm going to be honest with you, that felt a little bit rushed, but for a kindergarten level geography, you kind of have to be, you can't really dig into each country. Um, but I think, I think we did it in the best way we possibly could. So something that I thought was really cool was we really honed in on the Panama Canal and I got to explain how canals work um, and how it connected the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean and how that helped 
trade ships um, circumvent going, having to go all the way around South America. Um, and so we just learned a lot about that and the girls were really interested. Um, it also helped that I had, I grew up in Buffalo, New York and I went on the Erie Canal um, and they have a canal too, not as big as the Panama Canal, of course, but I got to share that uh, real life experience with them about how the water raised up and they would shut the gate and then it would lower and then we'd go down and it was like a stair almost, but it was like a boat on water stairs is kind of how I explained it to them in the pictures we were showing them. And so that was really fun to kind of talk through. So I don't want to make this video too much longer, but I did want to share what I'm doing with the activity pages. So the curriculum itself outside of the arts and crafts has activities that she gives you that you can print off. So here's all the pages that we will be doing this year. Um, this is my oldest daughter's Emery. Um, and then I made one for my youngest Charlotte. You see that I just made those on Canva, but basically there's a incomplete section and then once they complete one of them we move them back here so i was going to share some of these um, activity pages that we worked on and what we did with them uh, specifically talking about our animal profiles so part of build your library is that you do kind of a high level animal study um, you're learning about the habitats the climate in each of the continents and how they're very different and how those different climates support different animals um, and i'll talk about the spine for that one in another video that we use but um, we do we did do um, an animal profile page. I'll show you them for both the girls. It kind of teaches them how to research. Um, we've got a lot of DK books, and then eventually we went to the internet to get some information that we just couldn't find in the books that we have at our home. We could have gone to the library and I could have taught them how to research, but they're in kindergarten and in second grade. We're not there yet. When they get older, I'll really start teaching them how to write, um, do research. But so each of the girls for each continent will pick an animal after reading all of our stuff that we're doing for the curriculum that they want to do an animal profile on. So my oldest picked the gray wolf. And so she has to research all this stuff, you know, uh, what my animal looks like. You can print out pictures or draw it. She wanted to draw, what does it eat, moose? What, where does my animal live, tundra, forest, etc. Um, what are some of my animals predators and then back here what my animal um, it looks like as a baby and then you color in the area in the world that you can find them so gray wolves found in North America but then also they're found over here in Asia and going into Europe and a little bit into Africa so that was my oldest profile my youngest picked the bobcat she wrote what does it eat and I told her all these animals and she drew a steak meat <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong, but I just thought it was hilarious. I was like, don't you want to draw the animals? She goes, well, they turn into steaks anyways. I was like, man, that's such a literal concept in her head. Um, and then the different places that they can live, um, you know, predators, mountain lions are their predators. And then she printed off a picture, what does my animal look like as a baby? And then where you can find them on the continent. So I just love these. I didn't know if my kindergartner would do okay with this. Again, I thought it might be over her head. She hung tight with this. So... I guess let me clarify when I say I think this is this curriculum might have been a little bit too much for my young 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 kindergartner it's not like this kind of stuff that I think is too much for her it's some of the readings I kind of lose her and it's not because I don't think she can understand them or anything like that I think it's that she just at this age has a very short attention span my second grader on the other hand can sit for a, a chapter book and no problem so she's loving it so when it comes to those moments where we're reading those longer chapter books and things like that, I don't force my kindergartner to sit there and just listen, you know, with complete rapt attention. If she wants to go play Magna Tiles, that's fine. I do sometimes ask her not to necessarily narrate back to me, but I'll be like, hey, what was your favorite part about that chapter? And she'll bring up a point, you know, that I did read, but I don't know if the rest of the chapter really sunk in, if that makes sense. So I don't, I don't think it's a bad curriculum for a kindergartner. Again, my mind just was four, not even a week ago. So I've just got a young kindergartner. So that's probably part of it. So basically I think it is a good kindergarten level curriculum, but I also would absolutely recommend this up to maybe even third grade. I'm not even kidding. Like there's some really good stuff in here and you can add books to even ramp it up. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just because it has level zero on it, don't knock it for your older students is what I'm trying to say. I think that there's a lot of meat in this curriculum and I think it's really good. Okay, that was super long. I might have to divide these videos into even shorter chunks. 
I'll try and continue to do the continents, but if that seems like it's just getting too long, I might divide them into smaller videos. But if you guys didn't think this was too long, <laughs> leave it a thumbs up. If you have questions about anything I shared with you, uh, leave them down in the comments down below. If you are new here, definitely hit that subscribe button as I will continue to make review videos on Build Your Library Level Zero and all my other curriculum that we're doing, of course. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.